Good morning and um, and hello to you all and what a fantastic morning of uh, talks it's been already. And I know that a lot of you will be aching for that coffee, so I will try and do the rapid fire as required. Can I just get a sense of how many of you are familiar with the Vaccine Safety Network? If you're just a show of hands. Okay, okay, so work to be done. Thank you to those of you who did and for those of you who've never heard about it, here we go. Buckle up, here we go. So the Vaccination and Safety Network, I'm going to take you through these presentation points. If there's any questions at the end, we've got a short discussion. Um, if not, catch me in the coffee break, lunchtime, before dinner, whenever you like. What is the Vaccine Safety Net? So the WHO established the Vaccine Safety Net as a worldwide network of websites that provide reliable information on vaccine safety. So that's information for both patients and information for healthcare workers and that bridging information that healthcare workers use to go out into the community to the front line in terms of what they need to deliver vaccine programs. So to facilitate easy access to reliable, understandable, evidence-based information on the safety of vaccines for internet users, regardless of their geographical location and language. So wherever you are, we want you to have the right information and for that information to be trustworthy and safe and positive and helpful in promoting vaccine programmes. So there is a need to collaborate on an international level to increase awareness about vaccines, to reduce vaccine hesitancy and to strengthen confidence in vaccines. But much work to do. At any given point with the internet, we're just getting a sense of what's happening. And it's not for a few months down the road that we realise what was actually happening, by which time it's already changed already. So we're in this kind of constant moving feast. So whatever we do is basically a, a quick snapshot. So we need to understand the internet user's behaviour and preferences, provide that information and communicate the vaccine safety. But what about the digitally disenfranchised? What about those that are not online? What about those that are intermittently online? Let's go back. Vaccine background, established in 2003 to counterbalance groups using the internet to question the utility of vaccination and websites providing unbalanced, misleading and alarming fake safety information. We didn't call it fake news back then. We've got a name for it now. We know what the disease is, but we haven't found a cure yet and we certainly can't vaccinate for it. So we decided that there was a desire to, to link up and create the global network of websites assessed by WHO and make sure that they are providing the valuable information on safety worldwide. Um, the landscape's changed immeasurably since 2003. You know, little did we know back then. But the key player was the Global Advisory Committee on Vaccine Safety, and they defined the criteria for good information practices against which each of the websites, each one of the members of the network, are evaluated. So here's a little list of all the things that are on the evaluation of websites. I won't read through them all, just because we've got to make this work in, uh, well, less than 10 minutes, let's just say that. But ultimately, the assessment process is, is very careful. Um, candidate organisations can nominate themselves. You could nominate any organisation in your country, any other websites that you know of. This is your opportunity to be part of it. Uh, the only ones that will be excluded are corporate websites and websites that are not updated regularly. So for the parachutists on the web, the people that jump in, make a big show and then disappear off, that's no good. We need people that are going to do that groundwork and commit to this process of keeping things updated and by golly it's not easy the vaccination field is subject to a lot of change constant change in both policy production facility workforce all of these changes require changes in information and publications and that is a quite a serious commitment so some quick facts about the uh, network so 75 websites from 34 countries across six WHO regions in 24 languages. I'm not an expert on languages, but I know just off the top of my head that in London alone we have 300, so there's work to go. 20 candidates' websites have been evaluated lately, and I should mention something very important. Shannon Turner, and I think my colleague Brian Yeo are in the audience at the moment. Shannon, put your hand up. All right, there she is, wonderful. So I've got some fellow Vaccine Safety Network colleagues here that I should have pointed out at the beginning of this talk, so humble apologies. So at the moment, there's a lot of work to get the new countries on board. 
Um, so Israel, Philippines, Switzerland, Tanzania, Turkey, USA, Ube Uzbekistan and Zimbabwe are all hard at work. And 11 have requested some additional time to do that work. And it, it's not nothing. It's, it, it's big. And, uh, you know, with the UK population as small as it is by comparison, I can only marvel at the level of commitment that it's taking from these countries to come and be part of the network. And hello, Poland. So here is a map. Um, this is the coverage for the Vaccine Safety Network. And uh, unlike many maps that you see, the red a actually indicates the positive. So you can see some lovely red areas. I mean, uh, yeah, certain continents are doing much better than others. I think you can identify which ones are struggling. Um, so if you do know of any countries, you do have any contract contacts, please feel free to talk to them about the Vaccine Safety Network, to learn a bit more about it, and to nominate. Because what's the worst that could happen, you know? Vaccine network-based activities. Initially, it was important to form a visual safety, uh, a visual identity that was strong. In the UK and in America, I don't know about other countries, we have something called a kite mark, a safety standard kite mark. Is anybody familiar with that? Basically, if you see it on a window in a car, if you see it on a piece of equipment, if you see it around the place, you know that that piece of equipment, that helmet that I put on for my scooter is safe. It's made to a rigorous standard. It means I can use it feeling confident in its protection. I know I have bought some shonky bit of kit off eBay for a quick price, but I've invested in something that's been rigorously tested. And the vaccine safety network seeks to provide that in a global sense. So providing a strong visual identity and providing this new safety net kite mark, for want of a better word, or a word mark more properly, it was important to fix that identity and begin to build on that so that slowly but surely we build the trust in not just the symbol, but the values behind the symbol. In addition, um, my great colleagues at the Vaccine Sa Safety Network have set up the portal and they've also been engaged in research, pro research projects and partnerships with global platforms. Most recently, um, they've been working with Pinterest, looking at how Pinterest shares information. I know that in America, Pinterest is very popular. And unlike social media platforms in England, in America, social media platforms are very popular for healthcare information, which is a very different state of affairs to us in the UK, where people are more inherently suspicious about social media platforms. But no doubt, we will gallop behind and catch up. There's an innovation hub, and at the moment we're, we're working on a vaccine safety chatbot. Nothing can compete with the trust in a, in a healthcare practitioner. Nothing can compete with the one-to-one, -one, in the room, together, me talking to you, them talking to each other. But ultimately, there's time online, and that time online can be a time of finding trustworthy information or finding information that fuels doubts and worries and concerns. So the chatbot is to try and find some middle ground. Is there a way that we can use technology to work with those consultations, provide some information, but most importantly, signpost to real interactions? I love the internet. I love the digital world. There's nothing like being face to face with real people. So the multi-language roster of scientific reviewers, that is being built on constantly, and that's quite a lot of work. Um, but it's not onerous, it's not huge, and it's significantly incredibly satisfying when somebody does become a member. So again, we're looking to recruit. If anybody has extra time, I know time is very, very precious. But let's face it, what could be better than being part of something as significant as this? So here's the visual identity, there's the kite mark. I hope that you've seen it. I hope that you'll support it by seeking to put it onto your own country's website uh, and enabling that process. It's solely owned by, owned by the World Health Organization. It can only be used on websites, not on publications, not on leaflets, um, not on, on door signs, etc. It's just for those websites. Here's some examples. And I'm hoping that much like the Grammys and the Oscars and the Razzies, etc., that soon we can have the Emmys or the, the vaccine safeties. I don't know. I'm going to have to come up with a bit more of a jazzy title. But to award and to recognize really good quality provision. Digital provision is, it's a mixed bag, isn't it? 
and there are lots of different schools about search optimization, how to create more uh, quicker loading material, what's better for 4G, what's better in dial-up, but ultimately a clean, clear environment that's easily legible and encourages health literacy is what we're aiming for. So, social media, we're on there. Follow us, have a look. Make sure you've uh, familiarised yourself with the Vaccine Safety Network. And if you have any questions, let me know. The analytics project started last year. We're now working towards the next phase. The next meeting's coming up. And we're asking members to contribute to a digital pulse. We want to take the digital pulse of every country and get a sense of what the contexts are, what the challenges are, and what the key threats are to vaccine information. So I've already done this. We've already covered this, why we should all be members. Ultimately, I'd like to come back. I'd like to show you that map. And I'd like every single country to be read, for every single country to have some kind of membership. So with you and with buy-in from everybody, we can make this happen. Thank you very much.